Welcome to Digital Asset News, to get top stories in crypto. And bring it on to bite-sized pieces. So today, just as the thumbnail suggests, Cardano got listed. And that's great news. So we're going to talk about what's going on with that. Also, uh, a video that I did yesterday about uh, Cardano being delisted as far as a follow-up. And we're going to talk about uh, a metaverse play and why I believe it is uh, one of the biggest things that is going to happen over the next two to four years. So uh, without further ado, let's just drink into all those things. But first, let's take a look at what's going on into the market. So today it is Wednesday, one day before Thanksgiving uh, for here in the States. And uh, the, the prices are down a little bit. Uh, same thing, everything's moving kind of sideways with a little bit of dips here and there. Bitcoin's down a percent roughly, Ethereum a little bit, Binance, everything's down a little bit. Uh, Cardano took a hit. 6%. Man, XRP 2.5, Polkadot 4% down. Everything's down except for crypto.com. Man, I should invest in that one. Missed the boat on that. What are you going to do? Uh, Mana, though, is up uh, 28%. That's always fantastic. Theta is up 2%. Sandbox is up almost 40%. So remember, like, I love these plays and I'm glad I got into it. And I'm glad that uh, people that I you know, watch and listen to like uh, Stash and uh, Alex Becker and those types of guys, uh, they even called it and they called it right. And I'm glad that they did because uh, now I can diversify and it works out pretty well. So that is what is going on in the market essentially. And uh, before we break into uh, the big story of the day, just to let you know, uh, there's a bunch of things coming up because if you're not from the States, uh, after Thanksgiving, uh, they have like Black Friday uh, sales, which are like huge, massive sales. And then also you have like a Cyber Monday. And there's also a thing called Crypto Tuesday. But uh, Unstoppable Domains, they're doing this. Uh, it's a buy one, get one free for all, all their domains, right? And that's on that's on uh, Cyber Monday, no, November 29th. Uh, and you get, if you buy any kind of domain you want, either it's a .crypto, .coin, .wallet, .bitcoin, whatever else, um, for any kind of domain there you will get one for free. And again, the reason why I like this is because when you uh, use it, instead of sending out some like wacky 0x57535 of our blah, blah, blah address, you just send, hey, just send it to uh, Dan Teaches Crypto uh, or Dan Teaches Crypto, and that's my wallet. And it's got a bunch of like, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and like 20 other different uh, cryptos you can send it to just by sending it to that. So that's why I like that. And uh, that's what's going on with Unstoppable Domains. You, there's a link in the description. You don't have to use it, but if you do, that would help. But if not, you can go right to Unstoppable Domains. And uh, remember, it's uh, unstoppabledomains.com. Again, link in the description. Check that all out. So that's what's going on. But let's talk about this. Cardano being listed. Hey, watch out. That's good, right? Everybody's excited. And uh, this information come came to me a little late yesterday, so I wasn't able to cover it. But I'm covering it today. So this is what's going on. Cardano's... ADA to be listed on Bitstamp Crypto Exchange. Fantastic. If you don't know, Bitstamp is, uh, is a pretty higher tier type of crypto as far as like uh, the uh, liquidity and the amount of uh, transactions that are going on. So a little bit bigger than some like small different type of uh, exchange like an eToro. So this is the whole story. Bitstamp has announced that it's listing Cardano's native token ADA on exchange beginning November 23rd, and then uh, you can be placed and canceled on November 24th at around 11 a.m. UTC. And that's what's going on. That's the whole thing. So that's great. So why do I bring this up to your attention? Because crypto gets uh, listed every single day. And really what it comes down to, it comes down to the story that we covered yesterday about ADA being delisted and people lost their minds. I'm going to go over everything about it. But uh, the big thing here is getting the information to make the right investment decision for you and yourself. And we covered this yesterday. And people are like, Rob, you didn't talk about how it was only for the US. I read the title, Etoro de Lias Cardano and Tron for US customers due to regulatory issues. And I also said it again down here for holders of the tokens, Etoro say that US customers would be able to sell their holdings. So yeah, it's only for US customers. I don't know if I need to say that three or five or 10 times. So sure. So that's what's going on uh, as far as that. And there wasn't the content of the video. The big issue everybody had with was this. And I said, ADA delisted, the end. So people were just freaking out because they're like, first of all, they were like, I thought ADA got delisted from all the exchanges. Did I say there was listed, delisted from all the exchanges? Well, the thumbnail made it, I, that's not what it said. 
the thumbnail is different than the actual content. I mean, there is, it is the same information that you're getting. I'm just giving you a preview. It's kind of hard to tell you everything as far as the content in the title of the video. So when I say Ada delisted, is this the end? Ada was delisted and it was delisted on eToro. And as far as like, was it the end? Well, it was the end for eToro. I can tell you right there. And I didn't really want to go into it, but now that it, it just comes out like, oh, well, this is just an awful clickbait title and blah, blah, blah. I'll go into it right now. So when we talk about the end, and then before I go on, people were like, well, Rob, why didn't you talk about uh, this story about it being also listed on Bitstamp? It's because guess what? This information didn't come to me at that point. I didn't even know about it. I, I learned about it after I put out this video. This just happened yesterday. So that's the first part. And then when we're talking about this, this issue, as far as like uh, uh, the end and what was said, they're like, but Rob, Charles Hoskinson said, and his video itself was, and it's not coming up now, it's uh, Liquidity and eToro. That was the title of his, his video. And people just were talking to me and they said, well, you don't understand because Charles said it was just li liquidity. That's not what he said. If you watch the video, again, content, context of what's going on, he said that even though Cardano was delisted off of eToro, there wasn't a big deal because there wasn't a ton of liquidity. It was like rank number 64, whatever else is in exchanges, and Bitstamp had a ton of more liquidity. He also talked about how different divisions as far as IO is just a technical part, and the Cardano Foundation deals with all those things. He goes, we never got a summons. We never got any information as far as they were delisting it because of regulatory issues. He said in the video, we don't really have much information as to why exactly they did delist everything, but it doesn't matter because there's a great amount of liquidity throughout the entire world. He talked about Japan and everything else. So that's not exactly what it was. So when I talk about like, is it the end? I'll get into it right now. When a certain exchange or any exchange looks at it and goes, we need to delist it because of regulatory issues. It's fine, right? That's their decision. They can do that. But me, I'm just thinking out loud as a business person. If I'm looking at them going, hmm, if you're making money off of this different product, why would you delist it? Why would you go against it and just say, I'm going to get rid of it because for whatever reasons? Well, maybe it's because they don't have liquidity. Okay, fine, whatever else. But if they start to spout off and say that it is because of regulatory issues, maybe me as a business and an entity and, a, and have to you know answer to a lot of different people maybe i look to myself and go you know what maybe we should take a look deeper into these regulatory issues and see if we're not going down the wrong path so when i talk about the end it was the end for eToro is it the end for other exchanges possibly we see this happen again with privacy coins need i remind you about monero and what's going on there throughout multiple exchanges and that's the end for them until maybe sometime in the future so when i talk about these things give it a little content and don't just be what i call a thumbnail investor we look at the thumbnail and go geez i need to sell my cardano if you're doing that you're not going to make it. So that's really uh, the big thing uh, that is going on uh, with that piece. And um, I just want to remind everybody that in that video, when I talked about Cardano, it wasn't like I was saying, it's the end, it's the worst, and you need to get rid of it. The content, the context in there was my thesis was this. If it's for regulatory issues, it really comes down to the Howey test and how we determine as far as securities here in the United States. And I talked about how the Howey test in 1933 makes no sense whatsoever. So I talked about there is utility with Cardano if you use anything for NFTs. And I talked about Cardano Combat and all the different NFTs that are being built on there. I talked about cornucopias. I talked about the NFT gaming uh, realm and a bunch of different things that would be considered a utility. And I also referenced Ethereum, how they got skirted around that legal aspect because they just said, they hired a bunch of lawyers. I talked about the Invisible Machine book. Go and check that out. And they said, look, if you get into Ethereum, uh, it's all about the gas and that's the utility. It's not the other thing that we're, we're, we're uh, you know, getting away from as far as like the security, as far as someone going, you know what? We're gonna buy Ethereum in hopes that it gains a, a bunch of money then sell it off. No, 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 that's not what Ethereum does. It's all about the gas and the utility. So I made the same argument for Cardano. So look, when I talk about these things, I'm not going to give you uh, just straight up stupid hopium and everything's going to the moon and you should have no worries whatsoever. I told you specifically what was going on and I give you the best information I possibly can. On top of that, if you would have taken a look at it, what's down a ton today? 
six, seven percent is Cardano. So, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, I just got a little uh, perturbed. I have other different battles going on behind the scenes, but uh, that's what I got. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So, moving on. Uh, next piece. I think this is a probably a better better piece so I can calm down. The meta play. So, first of all. The metaverse, I think, is going to be very huge. I've done a couple of different videos. One was Stash, which was uh, Crypto Stash, which was fantastic. I really liked doing that one. And he really made it crystal clear as to why the metaverse is going to be big. And this one uh, really says it again. So uh, I am big into real estate. And now I'm more bigger, bigger, biggest into virtual real estate. So there's a 2.5 million virtual land sale. What happened here? So the metaverse group, <clears throat> which is headquartered in Decentraland, crazy, announced on Tuesday that it had completed what it calls the largest metaverse land acquisition in history. The subsidiary of tokens.com snapped up 160 parcels of land. 116. And uh, that cost just a, uh, a small shanty 2.5 million. Nice. Metaverse group plans to develop the estate for fashion shows and commerce. And this is where it gets interesting because the question is, why would I buy virtual land? That makes no sense, Rob, because it's just virtual and you can't do anything on it. Au contraire, mon frere. And it says right here, it will also form partnerships with fashion brands looking to expand their presence in the metaverse, especially in Decentraland. Who cares? You're saying fashion brands, who cares? Because they have a lot of money. That's why. So if you're taking a look at the Gucci and the Louis Vuitton, how much money do they swing around? Ton. And if you have a plot of land and they say, you know what, we'd like to advertise here because there's a lot of people coming in and playing games. So we'd like to just set up a little shop here. Great, I own the land, I'll rent it to you. Well, how's that gonna work? Because it's just, it's just virtual. Doesn't make any sense. We covered a story a couple of days ago, Sotheby's, Sotheby's, however you say it. And uh, what they had done is they had set up shop and they had auctioned off a very expensive piece by the artist known as Banksy. So if you have artists coming in, you have the fashion industry coming in, what makes you think that other industries aren't gonna come into this virtual land and set up shop and wanna have land and wanna, wanna rent it from you and wanna get your advertising dollars in on top of all the other things we don't even think about? I am telling you, in my personal opinion, not financial advice, just financial opinion, <laughs> I think virtual land is gonna be huge. That's why I'm going in heavy. And uh, to me, this is a two to four year play, but I think at the end of four years, I'm gonna be pretty darn happy. And that's it. So look, uh, that's it for today. Sorry I got a little heated, a lot of things going on, but if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if not, you can always give it a thumbs down. I got a ton of those yesterday. On top of that, you can also subscribe. A lot of things are going on pretty crazy, and that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.